Hi everyone and welcome to week 13 of Strategic Planning and Leadership. Uh, I am back this week to uh, the more traditional lecture format that I've been doing through the semester. Um, I hope all of you got some value out of last week's interview with Michael Trotter from Montana State University. Um, as you probably could tell from uh, my voice on that interview, I, I would have struggled to get through an inter uh, through a, a lecture. So, um, But anyway, this week we are talking about uh, purpose-driven organizations, and we're talking about moonshots and 10x thinking. Um, you may have noticed in the syllabus that uh, for this week I have readings to, do, to be determined. I think when I designed this course initially, I knew that these were things that I wanted to talk about uh, at the time, didn't really know uh, what materials I might use to do that. But um, I think the reason it was important for me to have this uh, in the syllabus was, um, you know, in my experience, people really crave that sense of purpose. And, um, uh, you know, I've talked about my experience in working with the university's strategic planning initiative and working through information technology strategic planning. And in both of those uh, experiences, uh, time after time, people talked about um, how they, they really desired a, a, uh, a shared vision, a shared purpose, a shared sense of, you know, where we were heading together. And um, I think rightly so. I think people recognized that, uh, uh, you know, we were sort of doomed to being a mediocre organization um, unless and, and until we we sort of developed that shared purpose. And so I think it's an important concept. Um, I've been throwing a lot of different uh, ideas uh, sort of out at you over the last uh, few weeks about, about leadership and about uh, executing on strategy. And um, it may feel like those are not really well connected, but I think the one thing that's, that maybe connects all of these ideas that I've been presenting is, um, you know, we're looking for ways to inspire people. We're, we're looking for ways to inspire action and commitment and um, cooperation towards executing these strategies that we are developing in our organizations. And so uh, that's a little bit about what this week is about. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, when I did the uh, syllabus, I did not know what I would have uh, for readings this week. So this is now on Moodle. Uh, I've got an article from the uh, Harvard Business Review called Creating a Purpose-Driven Organization. Uh, that is really focused on sort of the benefits of, of uh, doing that for employee retention, employee engagement, um, more, more than from sort of the strategic standpoint. But um, I also have a short article from Wired uh, called uh, Google X Head on Moonshots, 10X is Easier Than 10%. That, that Google X Head, that's Astro Teller that I introduced you to Earlier in the semester, we talked a little bit about him, um, and uh, we shared his graph about sort of how technology, the, the pace of technology is uh, moving at a faster rate than the, uh, the pace of organizational change. So we revisit uh, Astro a little bit. And then I also included a, a TED uh, talk on there from uh, a guy named Simon Sinek, uh, How Great Leaders Inspire Action. Um, I'll share just a little bit about his uh, sort of um, principles that that he has found in organizations that are highly successful and that sustains that success over a long period of time. Uh, we do have, this is a little bit of a busy week, we have our final discussion forum of the semester. Uh, I'm sure you're glad to hear that, so uh, that, that will be over week 12 and 13 materials. And then um, your final draft assignment, your coherent actions will be due uh, by before midnight on Sunday of this week. So uh, that'll be the last of your drafts. Uh, then you will put all of that together into a, a final uh, piece, one paper, all of those pieces that you've been working on throughout the semester. So uh, before we get too much into this week's uh, material, I do want to just uh, kind of revisit what we talked about or what, what you read about last week um, since I did not do a lecture. Uh, I had you read an article about from uh, John Cotter about his uh, idea of dual operating system. That's this idea that we're creating within our hierarchical structure this network uh, of, of teams. And it's very much uh, the same sort of philosophy that Stanley McChrystal talks about in his team of teams and that um, Michael Trotter from Montana State University talked about a little bit in his interview last week about 
how he he uses that those concepts of um, you know communicating um, very openly, very transparently uh, to all of the various uh, IT teams on his campus, and um, and then empowering people to make decisions. So, so there's uh, this concept from Cotter. Um, like I said, very similar to the team of teams concept. What they both have in common really is that they are building within uh, sort of a uh, rigid hierarchical structure, this much more agile, nimble um, network, a network of networks, in fact, in this case. And um, basically the advantage that that is, is giving the organization is it is giving an organization um, you know, sort of what you get in a small startup um, company or small startup organization. Uh, again, that that agility to make decisions quickly, move quickly. Um, there were there's sort of three key elements to this team of teams that I wanted to make sure that you, we talked about. Uh, one of those that McChrystal talks about is um, there's this mindset shift, and we'll 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 use this term several times I think in this lecture mindset shift. So in this case, it's a mindset shift away from this idea that in the hierarchy, information flows from the front lines up the chain of command to the top. Decisions get made at the top, and then those decisions get communicated back down through the chain of command. The mindset shift he's talking about is you flip that, that, that uh, instead information flows from, uh, in this case, the top to the front lines, um, the people on the front lines are actually the ones who make the decisions based on, on the information uh, coming from above and also the information that they gather on the ground. Um, and then they are reporting back up sort of the results of, of their decision making. And so flipping uh, who, who makes the decisions. In order to be able to do that um, effectively, it requires what he calls shared consciousness and shared purpose. So. Uh, this very much ties in with the purpose-driven organization that we're talking about this week. Um, that shared consciousness, uh, he talks, about, he uses the word radical a lot. Radical sharing of information within an organization. Uh, radical transparency. Um, this, and the reason you do that, he says, is that everyone needs a holistic understanding of the organization's work. Um, it's important in, in, in terms of building uh, relationships and building trust and allowing people uh, to make decisions on the ground because they understand the bigger picture of, of where they fit into uh, the mission of the organization. And then the, uh, the third concept that I wanted to make sure that uh, you understood from this team of teams concept is this idea of empowered execution, that again, uh, anyone in the organization has the authority, has the, they can make decisions, um, Basically, what, what the requirement is that they have to provide all of the contextual information to leaders as to why, why they made those decisions. Um, and what, what uh, McChrystal will say is that in order to do this, you need a culture that rewards individual initiative and critical thinking as opposed to simple execution of commands. And so you really are giving people within the organization at all levels, um, you're empowering them to... Uh, to think and, and to make decisions based on their understanding of the situation. So the, um, uh, one of the, the TED Talk that I'm having you watch this week by Simon Sinek, uh, one of the things he talks about is this, uh, what he calls the golden circle. And again, he talks about um, you know, another mind sh mindset shift that organizations and organizational leaders need to make. Um, and by that, he's talking about most organizations start from this outside layer, this what layer. Uh, and just um, let me define, I guess, quickly what each of why, how, and what, uh, what he's referring to. So why within an organization is your purpose, your cause, or your belief. Um, the how is uh, your, the organization's actions or the processes they use. And the what is um, the results of those actions or the product that, that they offer. And so... Uh, he talks in this, uh, this TED Talk about most organizations, particularly in their marketing, external marketing, but also sort of in their internal thinking, they start with the what. They talk uh, a lot about, you know, the features when, and the benefits of using their product or, or their service or whatever, um, and never really get to the why. 
And then he uses organizations um, and leaders who really do start from the inside and work out and, and, uh, and shows why they are much more successful. So he uses Apple as an example. Um, uh, you know, he talks about Martin Luther King Jr. and why he was a, a successful leader of the um, uh, civil rights movement by, by starting from the inside, starting with why. Um, and I guess one of the things he talks about is, um, you know, by starting with why, you see things that other people don't see. You, under, you, ha you have a purpose that, um, uh, that drives you. And, um, and because of that, um, you know, those, those sorts of leaders, those sorts of organizations are really good at giving us things that we maybe never would have thought of that we needed. Um, in Sinek's book that, that actually this TED Talk is built on, uh, his book's called Start With Why. Uh, I recommend reading it. Uh, he uses this quote from Henry Ford about the fact that, uh, you know, if he'd asked people what they wanted, they would have simply said a faster horse. And, um, you know, I've heard this, similar sorts of... Uh, quotes from, from Steve Jobs uh, when he was leading Apple that, um, you know, if, if, you, if he had gone out and asked users what they wanted, uh, that by the time they would have built what they wanted, you know, they, they would have wanted something different. Um, and also the fact that, you know, people really aren't very good at, at sort of conceptualizing and articulating uh, what it is they want. And so the really good organizations, the really effective organizations and effective leaders, um, you know, they, they don't ask customers necessarily what they want. Um, they, they understand, um, you know, people's needs. And I think this relates back really well to some of the conversations we had around design thinking and starting with empathy and deeply understanding the needs of, of the people we're serving. If you do that, um, that's really understanding then why, why it is you're going to make some decisions, why you're going to take certain actions. Um, and it gives more depth and, and meaning to, to those strategies that we employ. <coughs> I pulled this quote from um, the article about the purpose-driven organizations. Um, and this, or, this article provides, um, I think, some nice instructions about how you can, uh, can work to develop shared purpose within your organization. Uh, but it talks, he talks about... Um, I guess there's two authors. They talk about um, you don't create a, sh a shared purpose. You sort of discover it. Everybody sort of already knows what their values and and, and what's important to them is. And so um, a lot of it, again, is that empathy and understanding uh, what, what it is that's really important to people who work within your organization and then taking advantage of that to, to um, you know, inspire them and, and build on that. Um, I've had a lot of conversations just recently for some reason around role descriptions, and I, I think that's one of the reasons why I was interested in this article and I pulled it out. Um, I keep having people talk to me about how important it is to have really accurate role descriptions for employees within our organizations. And I, kept, I keep finding myself um, sort of bristling at that, and I wasn't sure why. And I think this, this article and, and this sort of this whole theme of this week helped me understand that... Um, you know, role descriptions really do focus on the what, what it is that each individual employee does, and they don't really focus on why they're doing it. And so, you know, maybe that's something you can think about a little bit in, in your leadership roles is, you know, making sure that each individual within your organization has this understanding of um, how it is that the, the work they do ties to the, the bigger purpose of the organization. And then one last concept that I wanted to share, again, the Astro Teller idea about uh, uh, moonshot thinking or uh, thinking, at, uh, you know, thinking about how you can make something 10 times better rather than just 10% better. Um, and the, you know, his argument in this article is that it's actually easier to sometimes to make things 10 times better than 10% 10 better. Um, and again, it's a mindset shift. It is... Um, you know, we, we talk a lot about making incremental changes, which is really how change happens. But, it's, but I think it's um, important to understand that if people have sort of that bigger, ambitious goal ahead of them, uh, whether, that's, you know, whether you call that a moonshot or your North Star or, um, you know, the, the big, hairy, audacious goal from Collins or whatever, I think you do need that in an organization, organization really to inspire folks. 
what Astro Teller's talking about with his 10x thinking is really um, the idea of forcing people to, th to change their perspective. Um, it's not just, you can no longer sort of rely on what you've been doing and making it a little bit better. You have to completely rethink what you've been doing. You have to ask different questions. And in doing that, sometimes you actually find that there are, are different problems that you're trying to solve than the ones that you, you've been trying to solve all along. And so, um, again, you know, it inspires people. It gives them uh, high expectations, um, you know, and if you give them high expectations and, and sort of the freedom to, to think differently and to take that empowered action, uh, some really amazing things can happen within your organization. So, so that's it for this week. Hope, um, I guess one more quote, I forgot I was on here. Um, basically what I was saying though, that 10x thinking can uh, really inspire uh, light a fire in people's hearts, as this says. So, um, hope you enjoyed this week's readings and the, the video, and um, we will be seeing you in the uh, discussion forum. Um, have a good week, everyone. Thanks.